Okay, so I want to welcome you guys to the compression section of this course. Now, I'm going to use this video to really go into detail about the compressor. I know if you guys watched the, the PowerPoint presentation where I break everything down, you know, you probably got your notes. But here, I really want to hammer it home. So we're not going to listen to any of the beat right now. I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain the compressor, what each function is, so that way you guys can get a better understanding of how to actually use it and and when to use it now me personally i use the compressor to compress my kicks and basically my snares and sometimes my instruments you know such as my brass or things like that you know sometimes use the compressor to compress my um my synths and my leads or my vsts whatever i'm using i I never compress the the hi hats or my my percussion like hi hat shakers and tambourines. I don't ever compress them. You know the the purpose of the compressor is to, in my these are my words, okay. They are to contain the sound, but still give it room to breathe. So it if I had to break down a compressor, what a compressor does that that is the way I would explain it. You know it contains the sound. It doesn't let it go over a certain point which keeps it from clipping which keeps it from you know making the track sound sound just horrible okay so here fruity loops comes with two compressors okay you have the fruity compressor then you have the fruity multi band compressor this is the one i mainly use but I hope you guys understand okay what the compressor is if you wanted to use a fruity compressor now these are the six main functions of the compressor okay you have your threshold, your ratio, your gain, attack, release, and this is basically your knee. So if you come over here to the multiband, you have your threshold, ratio, knee, attack, release, and gain. Okay. Now, what the threshold does is it controls how much, pretty much, how much you want the compressor to work. So when you open up the fruity compressor, it's automatically set at 0, 0.0 decibels, which basically means that it's it's set so whatever volume that your sound is set at it's not going to go up anymore but here you have the threshold here set at about 18 decibels but you can also turn it up now you know it has three bands here on the multi band low band mid band and high band so you can set the threshold how much you want how much you want it to work on each band Okay, so here on the on the on the basic compressor, it's already set at zero. So whatever your sound is at, that's where it's going to be at. And you have your ratio one, one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one. Basically, the higher you go, the more compressed the sound is. Okay, so me, I I never really use the the fruity compressor, but I'm just showing you guys just so you can get a better understanding of what it is if you wanted to go ahead and use it. Okay, the attack. Okay, let me, let me go back and explain the ratio. The ratio basically is how much you want to compress the sound or whatnot. So if you, whatever you set your threshold to, okay, the ratio controls how much of that threshold you let go into the output. So how much of that threshold you let come out. So if it's set at two to one, basically saying is that if the sound goes over every two decibels, the sound goes over the threshold, the compressor is only going to allow one decibel out. So the more compressed you have it, if you have your shit set at six to one, seven to one, eight to one, then that means every eight decibels the sound goes over, it's only going to allow one, which means that your sound is squashed. You don't want that because another thing the compressor does is it controls the dynamic range. So it brings the highs and the lows together. So if you record in a room, let's just say you have some vocals or whatnot, and you record in a room where it was a lot of like background noise and you really couldn't hear it at first, you know, it was kind of, you know, minuscule, but as soon as you put a compressor on it, the compressor is gonna bring that low end up, which would be the background noise. So therefore you would hear it a lot more and you really, you know, that's why you gotta watch where you record at or whatever, but you know, we're talking about beats here. so. You really don't want to set your compressor, I mean, your ratio too high because you don't want to squash the sound. You just want to control it and contain it a little bit so it doesn't go too high over the threshold. 
Now, the attack determines how much you how or how fast the the compressor goes to work so if you got it set at zero that means that as soon as that sound hit it's getting compressed you don't really want that okay some some sounds you might want that it, it, it's all up to you but you kind of want to the the compressor breathe a little bit or the sound breathe a little bit before it's compressed so to speak so you kind of want to let the attack back a little bit depending on what you're using it on like when i use for my my drums or my 808s i let it breathe a little bit I, I you know i take it back some so if i'm using a multi-band which i mainly use i usually put it at about 50 milliseconds so that the sound hits and it gets a little bit of life before it's compressed okay that that's basically what that means the release it determines how fast the compressor goes back to its original state. So if you had your compressor set right here and you had your release here at about 200 milliseconds, after 200 milliseconds, the compressor will automatically go back to this state after it has compressed the sound itself. That's what that means. I really don't fuck with the release like that because, oh, excuse me, because I don't know. I, I, you know, I just, I don't like to have a lag on it, you know. It's just me, you know, whatever you want to do. The gain controls, after it's been compressed, high, if you want to raise the volume. So after a sound is compressed, the volume is, is taken down some. So it could be taken down about two or three decibels, and then you can raise that two or three decibels with that sound still being controlled. And you have your knee here, or your knee here, which is basically how smooth you want the, the compressor to transition into the sound. So if you wanted to compress real hard, then, you know, it's set it hard. If you want it to be softer, you know, then you could set it softer so it's not like immediate, like boom, like, you know what I mean? It just quickly compresses, you know what I'm saying? If it's set it soft, it'll like, you know, smooth into the compression, you know what I'm saying? So that is basically the compressor in a nutshell okay with the multi-band it's the same thing except these are three different bands so you got your low band which is your kicks and 808s mid band your mid harmonic snares claps uh, mid shit and then you got your high bands your high simps uh high hats shakers um certain snares certain sounds you know what i'm saying so that's what that is we'll get more into the multi-band compressor and how to use it in the next video where i'm going to show you guys how to compress your kicks and and you know how to how to bring them to life you know not compress them too much but you know just compress it enough to where as though they're not peaking and they're not just overly exaggerating the beat so i'm gonna see you guys over in the next video deuces